was behind these hacks and leaks. So why come out with it now? Go public now. You know, it's either very good timing or a complete coincidence. But you saw just a moment ago President Obama voting in Chicago. At the very moment he was voting, the administration was putting out a joint statement from the Department of Homeland Security and the Director of National Intelligence saying that Russia is behind these hack attacks on U.S. political targets and individuals and that the attacks had to be authorized by the highest levels of the Russian government. It said that it's attributed these attacks because they bear all the hallmarks of similar Russian attacks in Europe and in uh, the Ukraine on elections there. Now, it does say that they can't say that the Russian government is behind these recent probes into U.S. state voter databases, the one notably we know about in Arizona, the one in Illinois, and about uh, two dozen other states that say they've gotten similar probes. But they say many of those came from computers that were operated by Russian companies. Now, they go on to say in the end of the statement that they still have faith in the integrity of the U.S. election system, that it's one thing to try to get into individual email accounts or the Democratic National Committee or the Congressional Campaign Committee, quite another to try to get into the very disparate and, and basically unplugged systems that tally the votes on election night. And uh, Pete, earlier this week, you uh, talked with us about uh, the NSA leak and uh, the uh, contractor with the NSA. And now we know there's a, another leak or another arrest in this. What's up with that? Well, the question, of course, about Harold Martin is they still don't know what he did with the material that he, uh, they say he took from the NSA. They don't know whether he was hoarding it. They don't know whether he was giving it to someone else. They got onto this because somebody in mid-August offered NSA secrets for basically $500 million, and that's when they realized they had a problem. They arrested him, but they don't know what he did with it. So they're they, they still don't know where that goes. All right. All right, stay tuned. A lot, uh, lot to keep track of with all these leaks. Thank you, Pete. That's Pete. Pete Williams will have all the developments on NBC Nightly News right after this broadcast coming up at 7. We want to switch gears now, shift to sports and the Nats playoffs tonight. The park is packed with fans right now, all of us hoping for a win in game one against the Dodgers. And tonight we've got all the bases covered with Chris Lawrence live in the field. Hi there. How's it going? <laughs> Hey, Dorian, uh, everybody's super excited. I mean, I think a lot of Nats fans are telling us they are ready to put the disappointment, some of the disappointments over the past four years behind them. They say they respect their opponent, but look, they got the red rally tiles. It is a sea of red inside, and they are not spooked by the Dodgers. Never say die. This is Washington. This is my hometown. This is where my roots are, and I am so proud of all that we do here, winning a championship would mean so much to this town. Yeah, that was Joe Briscoe. Uh, he's an Uber driver. Uh, he's just telling us how, man, he grew up, was born about a block from the stadium, and just talked about how much uh, he has seen things change and seen the excitement of baseball come back to this town in a way that he hadn't seen in years. He remembers back when the Senators were here. Uh, uh, we're back now live. I'm joined by News 4 Sports' Carol Maloney. And Carol, the thing is about Nats fans, man, they know their baseball. I, I want you to listen to what this one young man told me as he was coming into the ballpark tonight. Tell me anybody on the Los Angeles Dodgers that comes out like Trey Turner besides their rookie. I mean, Clayton Kershaw delivers to the...